Welcome again. Right now we are on John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. Jesus washes his disciples' feet. Now, as a side note here, um, I want to talk about the word disciples. Perhaps there are some people who are watching this who you don't really know what the word disciple means. Or what does it mean to have disciples? Well, the word disciple is actually just a fancy word which means student. You know, so Jesus and his disciples is basically just Jesus and his students. Another thing I want to bring to your attention, again, as just a little footnote on this, is that uh, it wasn't uncommon for rabbis to have disciples. And even to this day, uh, you know, Jewish rabbis, they have their own disciples. And, you know, a lot of these rabbis, they have disciples, and it's kind of like a closed group, okay? And that's basically what Jesus had. He chose 12 men uh, to be his students. You know, he didn't really choose much more than that to be part of his, you know, uh, you know, student basically closed group, so to speak. And so, you know, some people think that when Jesus went around and uh, called his uh, disciples, they thought, oh, that must be really cool. You know, I mean, that must have been something that, you know, that uh, n nobody did back in those days, you know. But, you know, it was a common thing from what I understand. It was a common thing for rabbis to choose and to have their own selected students, disciples. And again, it's the same way it is today. So, now, in context, uh, we just came from Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. People are more or less proclaiming him to be the Messiah. Hosanna, uh, you know, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, uh, calling out for him to save, calling him the, uh, the king of Israel. So it's just a very awesome scene here. And uh, I explained last time that a lot of people, a lot of people in that position, if, you know, a lot of people in Jesus' position, if they were in Jesus' position and they were basically ushered into the throne almost, uh, you know, they would just soak it all in. You know, a lot of celebrities or a lot of religious leaders today would just soak it all in. You know, I can just imagine, you know, some politicians or leaders, you know, if they're proclaimed king, you know, they'd be waving at the people, shaking hands, you know, kissing and all this kind of stuff. What did Jesus do? He just came right in. They proclaimed him to be more or less the king, uh, the Messiah. Right away, he turned around and said, you know, you have to follow me. If you serve me, you follow me. And guess where I'm going? I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to be sacrificed. And he started talking about sacrificing your life. And he started talking about all these hard sayings, you know, that very hard for people to um, for people to accept. And then we come into this story. Jesus washes his disciples' feet. Again, to see the the gravity of what's happening here, you got to see it in context. Okay, Jesus is, you know, at the pinnacle, at the peak of his ministry, and what does he do? He doesn't soak in all the attention and, you know, allow himself to become proud or arrogant. Rather, he humbles himself even more. He speaks harder. <laughs> he speaks hard words and he humbles himself even more. And he washes his students' feet. Let's read it. This is John chapter 13, verse 1. Now, before the feast of the Passover, it's Pesach in the Hebrew, Jesus... Yeshua, knowing that his time had come, that he would depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, in other words, loving his disciples, he loved them to the end. During supper, the devil having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. It was the devil here that came into Judas' heart and put it in his heart to betray his, his teacher, his rabbi, his beloved friend, okay? As it says in the book of Psalms, you know, my friend has, has lifted up his heel against me. You know, so the, you got to wonder, these disciples, especially Judas, okay, 
They walked with Jesus. They talked with Jesus. They were with him day in and day out. They heard and they saw some of the most marvelous and amazing things that anybody could ever see in all of the history of mankind. You would think that all of the 12 disciples would have been the holiest of holy men and that they would have been the best of the best. But you wonder how Judas, having seen what he's seen, having heard what he heard, having experienced what he experienced, could allow Satan, the devil, to come into his heart as he did. It could have been, and most likely, the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak, probably was the alabaster jar of perfume that Mary broke. And Judas was angry over that. You know, he was angry because he lost a lot of money because, he, you know, he wasn't supposed to take any money, but he was a thief. And that, that little bottle of perfume, they say about 12 ounces worth, was worth a whole year's pay. <laughs> That's a very expensive perfume. And, uh, and Judas was very angry. And so when you get a chip on your shoulder, that is when the, basically you pave the way for the devil to come in. And that's what happened to Judas. Verse 3, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he came from God and was going to God, arose from supper and laid aside his outer garments. He took a towel and wrapped a towel around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Then he came to Simon Peter. He said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? You know, Simon didn't want Jesus to touch his feet. He's like, no, I'm not worthy. Remember when he, when he first got called, he's like, Lord, I'm not even worthy to be your disciple at all. Uh, I'm a sinner. Uh, don't call me. Don't, what do you have to do with me? You're a holy, you're a very holy man. W why do you call me? And here, now we've got Yeshua, Jesus washing his feet. And again, Simon's like, whoa, I don't know if I should receive this from you because I'm not worthy of this. Verse 7, Jesus answered him, you don't know what I'm doing now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I don't wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, someone who has bathed only needs to have his feet washed, but is completely clean. You are clean, but not all of you. For he knew him who would betray him. Therefore, he said, you are not all clean. So when he had washed their feet, he put his outer garment back on and sat down again. He said to them, do you know what I've done to you? You call me teacher, or literally rabbi, and Lord. You say so correctly, for so I am. If I then, the Lord and the teacher, the rabbi, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Most certainly, I tell you, a servant is not greater than his Lord, neither is one who is sent greater than he who sent him. And this is the way it is with all of the different world religions, and not only the religions, I'm talking about right down to teachers and students. If you are fully taught by your teacher, you know, and assuming that you're still under, under the authority of your teacher, then being fully taught, fully trained, you would be just like your teacher. So considering the other world religions, if you want to know what an adherent of that religion would look like, if they really do what they're supposed to do, if they're really following that religion the way they're supposed to be following it, then look at the leader of that religion. Very, very important point. Verse 17, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Again, 
you see, Jesus is emphasizing works here. He's emphasizing obedience. Don't just listen to me. Don't just know it in your head. Don't just have information, data in your system, but do it, okay? And that's the difference between a true follower of Yeshua and you say, maybe even the devil himself. The devil knows the scriptures. The follower of Yeshua should really know the scriptures. The difference would be, hopefully, <laughs> that the follower of Yeshua is the one who actually does what the scriptures say. So as you go, remember, you know, it's so easy to read through the teachings of Jesus. It's so easy to read through all this stuff. But I challenge you to go through it slowly, to go through everything that Jesus said, not only what Jesus said, everything the scriptures say. Go through it slowly and, and apply it to your life to the best of your ability. You know, pray, Father, help me to apply this. Help me to take this very seriously. Let me really spend time on this commandment to make sure I am clean and I'm obeying it properly. So thanks again for listening. And as you go, may God bless you with strength and power, give you the ability to obey him as you should. Thanks again.